So we're going to begin talking about chapter 3 in this lecture, and we're talking about section 3.1, which is entitled Scatter Plots. Scatter Plots, that's a T, and Correlation. And I want to begin, actually, so far everything we've done in chapter 1 and 2 has, has to do with something called uni variate data, which is a fancy way of saying you basically have one list, right? Think of all the things we did in the last chapter. I basically gave you a list of numbers, and you put in L1, and you had a bunch of numbers in there. Well, chapter 3 gets into something a little bit chipper, different. Chapter 3, we're for the first time talking about something called bivariate data. And obviously the uni and the bi kind of tell you what it is. Now we're going to have two lists. So a lot of stuff we're going to be doing in this chapter, we're going to put something in L1, something in L2, a bunch of numbers here, a bunch of numbers here, and then compare the relationship between the L L1 numbers and the L2 numbers. Okay, So kind of a fundamental difference. And so a lot of things that we used to do where univariate data will no longer be true for bivariate data. So for example, this is, might be a list of bivariate data. What I mean here is this is the diameter of uh, certain things, of, like certain melons in inches, so 4.5 inches in diameter, and the weight in ounces. So this melon was 4.5 inches in diameter, weighed 9.3 ounces, and so on. I had five melons here, but you can imagine a lot more lists. Um, and so typically I think the way, the thing you're going to do often is if you wanted to, the most appropriate graph for bivariate data is something called a scatter plot. And I think you would know what to do to make a scatter plot of this. You would draw an xy axis. On the x axis, let's put diameter. On the y axis, you would put weight. Our rule of still labeling the axis still applies. And you'd pick some sort of scale. I'm not going to do this very accurately. And of course, you would just have whatever point, five dots, in this case, five dots. Okay? That's a scatter plot. And I think you kind of have you know, made a ton of those over and over. You know, one dot for each, um, for each observation. A little bit of terminology here. In this case, we call the variable on the x-axis the explanatory variables. Explanatory variable. It's just the variable that you ch <coughs> we choose to plot on the x-axis. So in this case, diameter is the explanatory variable. The variable that we choose to plot on the y-axis is called the response variable. Response variable. But don't think sometimes that the response variable is in response to the diameter. In fact, sometimes it is, but actually we could pretty much freely flip-flop the x and the y, the explanatory and response variable. We think about it, this is the term, but be very um, careful about saying that one responds to the other or one causes something else. Okay? So we'll use these numbers a little bit today, but I think you can make a scatter plot of that pretty easily. So now let's talk about how to describe a distribution. Distribution. This term distribution, we did this in chapters 1 and 2, the term distribution can apply to univariate data, but can also apply to bivariate data. So in the old days, when we were talking about one list with univariate data, We had a checklist for how to describe. Remember that checklist was shape, center, and spread. So whenever I asked you to describe the distribution of one list, you would go shape, center, and spread. Okay, shape with things like skewed, symmetric, unimodal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, now we're going to have a slightly different list when we talk about bivariate data because it doesn't really make sense to talk about the center of a scatter plot. Uh, so now when we talk about bivariate data, we're going to talk about direction. We're going to talk about form. And we're going to talk about strength. So for the next few slides, I'm going to talk about direction, form, and strength, and kind of what those things mean, how you might use them to describe a bivariate distribution. So let's begin with the idea of direction. And there basically are two possibilities, positive and negative. So, for example, if you had a scatter plot that looks something like this, 
See how in general it goes uphill? We would say that this has a positive association. Because in general it's going uphill. Okay, we're not talking about what shape it is really. We're not talking about how strong it is. Um, but this is a positive association. If it's going downhill some way, we would say it has a negative association. So basically when you're talking about direction, your two choices are positive and negative. Those are the two choices. Okay, now let's talk about the next in the checklist, which is uh, form. And form is sort of what shape it is, um, but we don't really like to use the term shape. You might say it has something like this. In general, you would say this is linear. It's not a perfectly straight line, but in general, if you describe what shape it is, it's more or less linear. In this one, in case, it's positive and linear. But you can imagine some, some scatter plot that looks something like this. Well, you wouldn't say that that's certainly linear. You might say that it's non-linear. Now, you might be asking the question, well, would you call this one positive or negative? It's kind of both. Usually, we only use the words positive and negative when we're talking about linear distributions. Um, and you wouldn't, even, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't use that term when you're talking about things that are non-linear, because obviously it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is the strength. And the strength, we can kind of be a little more wheezy, but basically we've got <clears throat> the idea of if something is in a perfectly straight line, we would say that this is very strong. And if something is, in general, kind of in this shape, but kind of all over, we might say that this is somewhat weak. And we can kind of use some Weasley words here and say very strong or very weak, so on and so on and so on. So we've hit all three things, right? Direction, form, and strength. Okay, Combine those things. Well, what if you had a graph or a distribution or a scatter plot that looks something like this? Dun, 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 dun. We would say this is negatively associated, right? It's shape, it's linear, and it is quite strong. Whereas something like this is still pretty strong, but is non-linear, right? And we won't use the term positive or negative because it's non-linear. Something like this, you might say. Uh, look at all the fun it is making dots. Okay, good. Well, here, we certainly would agree it's pretty weak. But in general, what shape is it? It's sort of linear. And it is sort of positive. In general, it's kind of going uphill. Okay? Um, so you want to try to combine all three of those things, all three of those terms. There's one important number we're going to calculate for the for um, a bivariate distribution. That's something called the correlation coefficient, which the variable we use for that is the letter R, and the correlation coefficient is a measure of strength. And this is a number that actually your calculator will calcul calculate. In class, we're going to show what that is. But R is a number that is always between negative 1 and 1. 1 or negative 1, and then this means perfectly strong. The closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the strong it is. The closer to 0, the weaker it is. Um, and if it's positive, that means the association is positive. If it's a negative, that means the association is negative. I just said a lot, so let's kind of do some examples. Imagine you had something like this. This might have like an R value of, for example, 0 0.98. It's positive, and it's very close to 1 because it's so strong. Whereas this, well, it's meant to be one big dot there, I don't know what's going on there. 
pretty darn weak, right? But in general positive, this might be R of like 0 0.2. And again, your calculator can kind of figure out what these things are, right? Um, excuse me. Let's go to the next page. Something like this. Dun, 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 Perfect, or pretty darn strong, but in the negative direction, maybe negative 0.99. Whereas something, I don't know, like this, let's try to make the weakest thing we can. But maybe in general, it's still kind of a little negative. This might be like R of negative 0 0.15, for example, okay? Very, very, very weak, okay? So what do we know about R? Okay, facts about R, which is the correlation coefficient. We just said that R is always between negative 1 and 1. We kind of know what that means now. Okay, one of the facts about R is that it is very non-resistant. Okay, any kind of one uh, outlier will kind of move thing, will dramatically change R. We can, we'll see some examples of that in class. Another fact about R is that you can, is not affected by swapping x and y. Let's think of what that means. If you made a scatter plot with height on the x-axis, weight on the y-axis, and you got an r value of something, and then you flip-flopped them, it would have the same r value because it measures the strength of it. Um, and it would be the same strength if you did it the other way. Okay, it's also not affected by swapping Swapping is probably the wrong here, but units, changing units would be a better term. Changing units. That is, in my example of height on the x-axis, weight on the y-axis, if you change like from inches to centimeters or from pounds to kilogram, yes, the scatter plot would have different kind of scales, but it would be the same strength, so the R value would stay the same. And the last fact about R is that we <coughs> only use it for straight lines or for linear relationship. If there's some graph that looks something like, here we go, this up here, don't try to use the R value for that because it's not linear to begin with. And what it'll try to do is it'll try to tell you how strong it is to being linear, which is to say it's not very strong even though it looks kind of strong. So we only use it for straight lines. Okay, that's pretty much sums up section 3.1.